Welcome biologists, this session we're going to take a look at ECGs. So the first thing is you need to know what ECG stands for. So you need to know that it stands for an electrocardiogram. Now the trace of an electrocardiogram looks like this, where you have a P wave and then a QRS wave and a T wave. So the P wave is representative of atrial systole, We've got QRS which is representative of ventricular systole, and then the T wave which is representative of diastole. Now, in an exam, what they might do is give you a normal heart rate and ask you to compare it to either a fast, slow or irregular heart rate. Now, you do need to know the other scientific terms for this. So a fast heart rate is called tachycardia. A slow heart rate is called bradycardia. And an irregular heartbeat um, can be known as fibrillation. So either atrial fibrillation or ventricular fibrillation. Now, if I've got ventricular fibrillation, I'm going to get a lot of QRSs in there. If I've got atrial fibrillation, I'm going to get a, a very undistinctive P wave. You can't really tell where the P wave is. So in an exam question, if I ask you to compare the normal heartbeat to, for example, a slow heartbeat, you would probably have to use this terminology. So, for example, there are more QRSs or there is a... Um, longer distance between the T wave of one heartbeat and the P wave of the next or you cannot distinguish um, if there are P waves present or um, I don't know the QRS is, is bigger than usual or whatever it may be you just need to make sure that you're using P, QRS and T within your explanation. So if I did a comparison now between my normal heartbeat and my slow heartbeat I would say that my slow heartbeat has fewer QRSs. I would say that there's a longer time between the T wave of one heartbeat and the P wave of the next. Um, but I would say that the QRSs still have the same amplitude, which means they still have the same height. So that's what we mean there by a comparison. Now, in an exam, you may be asked to um, identify which ECG represents which kind of heartbeat. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at identifying which of these is a, a, a slow heartbeat, which is a regular and which is fast and try and remember the better scientific terminology to describe those. So pause the video and have a go now. But here are the answers. So this first bait, heart bait here is tachycardia. It's a fast heart rate. There's not much space between one heartbeat and the next. So the T wave here and the P wave. Um, we also have this next one, which is bradycardia, which is a slow heart rate. So here you can see a, a long break here in between um, the QRS T wave and the P wave of the of the next one. Um, but you can see that the QRS is uh, here are a bit smaller actually than the tachycardia ones as well. And then the last one here, this is actually atrial fibrillation. You can tell it's atrial fibrillation because you really can't distinguish where that P wave is at all. Um, it's very difficult to be able to tell where that is. Um, so there we have it. it QRSs would there be more QRSs if it was ventricular fibrillation, which is where the ventricles would be um, contracting abnormally. This one is atrial fibrillation where the atria are contracting abnormally. And that's everything that you need to know here on ECGs. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.